so I visited my older cousin, Mr. New. What would you say about the pirates? What do you think of them? You know, pirates are people like us. Before, there were some people who were fishers and lobstering. But after that, there had come many big ships. Because there is no government, no seashore guard. So these ships came close to the shore. Sometimes, you know, there are fish, there are lobster. Somali waters are very rich in fish, and in the absence of a functioning government, in the absence of any sort of coast guard to patrol the waters, you have a large number of vessels from a number of countries um, over the years that have been coming into Somalia and effectively fishing at will. It's estimated that commercial fishing within Somalia at one point was making 300 million a year. The fishing stock was severely depleted due to this commercial farming. You have all of these fishermen with no more opportunities. So you start to see piracy in one sense arising as a reaction to that. They wondered, these Somalis, what can we do? Everyone brought again <laughs> to hunt these ships. They captured one, another one. They got a lot of money. And they never felt that they, can, they could get this money before. They bought fast boats and big guns. Then they became you know, a little bit famous. But do you support their activities? What do you feel about them? I supported them. Because if these ships were not come there and attack all these, you know, with these little people belong, there would be no problem, you know? Initially, they were just protecting their own livelihood. In that sense, I admired them for the bravery and, and, and protecting uh, my country. Sam's next stop was Ale the fishing town where his father was born. Not all Somalis are pirates. Some of them chose to be pirates, and other fishermen, they chose not to. They are starving, they are poor. It's easy for people that live in the Western countries to judge or blame the Somalis. It's OK. Hado, hado. But there's always two sides on every coin. We all want to have cheap sushi, but uh, nobody asks, where does that tuna come from? The problem was compounded by the foreign dumping of toxic waste. The tsunami of 2004 brought much of the evidence onto the shores. The elders told Sam they watched in anger as their waters were exploited and then poisoned. Abdaweli is one of Sam's cousins who turned to piracy. In Manaha Marakiti, Kuwe Hamulka, and Ragna and Derakan, or Ragna in the highway of ten, you go but to Kushway soon. Oh, so I do he but the Norakuchi or then Sila Sam Alhan, you could lift in and Manaha and Chilifado, and a Kerguado, so we don't have it now. The pirates looked to the horizon and saw the wealth of the world sailing past the Somali coast. They're firing in the steering gear room. They're firing into the steering gear room. We got another one out here. They set out in fast-moving attack skiffs with AK-47s, grenade launchers, and ladders. The unarmed crews of the slow-moving cargo ships and oil tankers had no choice but to surrender. After each attack in the Gulf of Aden, phones start ringing in the city of London, the center of commercial shipping and insurance. But what about if you tried to split the difference? Stephen Askins is a maritime lawyer. 
Ship owners call him in to help recover their hijacked ships and crews. But that's the issue, isn't it? The issue is whether you can pay that sort of money, or whether you want to pay that. And if you don't, how long it takes you to get to the amount that you do want to pay, and what the funding implications for both those positions are. We had this explosion in 2008 of men in small boats being able to attack large ships 50, 100, 150, 200 miles offshore. And before the international community was really very interested in this, the commercial world had to deal with this. Between April and December 2008, more than 30 ships were seized by Somali pirates. Criminal gangs and local warlords had moved in on the action. What started as an improvised fishing levy on foreign commercial trawlers was becoming a hugely lucrative extortion racket. When our ship went into the Gulf of Aden in, in, in November, we were well aware that there was a uh, piracy risk in the area, and our ship went into the Gulf of Aden very well prepared for that. The problem with our ship is that our ship is in the category low and slow, and at that time there was very little protection to be had from any naval forces in the area. So when our ship was attacked, even though our captain tried to take evasive maneuvering and had to look out on the bridge, uh, he was actually defenseless. We got an alarm from the ship that there was a pirate attack on the way. We tried to raise the ship then on the satellite telephone. The ship didn't respond. We could also follow the ship on what's called a purple finder, which acts as a tracking system almost in real time that follows the route of the ship. And we could see that the ship was actually taking evasive actions. It was wearing away.